Before we begin, I'd like you to please welcome distinguished elder Nawi, Dr. Carolyn Briggs, AM, a senior Boonwurrung traditional owner and respected Kulin Nation elder to provide a formal welcome to the country. Firstly, I'd like to pay my respects to you because this is a really chilly Melbourne night and having everybody come together, it's a, a journey of this celebration of a collaboration. Yes, my name is Carolyn Briggs or Nawi Carolyn Briggs. Um, getting rid of the term auntie. There's lots of aunties. So um, it's the leadership and your status in, in your own community. So firstly, in the language afforded to me, it's Wamanjika, Marambrikbik, Bunarong, Nirmda, Barupt and Aka Willem. Come with a purpose to our beautiful home, the lands of the two great bays. It is my pleasure to be able to welcome you all here tonight, but it is my responsibility to ensure that you do come with a purpose. Wamanjika, I do so not on behalf of my ancestors, the Bunwurrung, I do so be on behalf of all First Nations people on where we meet today. The First Nations, the people across Australia, all shared a special connection to lands and waters of their ancestors. And it is, has not been disconnected since millennia. Despite the dispossession, the displacement, the discrimination that we've all experienced over the last 200 years. This connection dates back to our creation stories. For the Bunwurrung, our creation stories tells us of Bunjo, our creative spirit, who travels as an eagle and how he created the lands and waters around where we meet today. He also created the Kulin people and he taught them about the circular relationship that they have with these lands and waters in order for us to be taken care of by the land. And so, so also that we can take care of the land and waters. And we can only do this through adhering to the Warongi Bik, the law of the land our customary law. Much like our laws today, these laws dictated how we interacted with each other and how we interacted with the land and how we conduct ourselves while we are on other people's countries. The Bunwurrung Warongi Bik speaks of three Pacific laws. The first law is Yelange, knowledge. It is the responsibility to have this knowledge. And once knowledge has been attained, then we have the responsibility of its survival, its continuation. We have the responsibility for the younger generations to maintain that knowledge and pass it down so it can be used for our future generations. We also have the law of Jambana, this law speaks of community, the importance of community, the importance of diverse communities, but a unified community. The Bunwurrung people and the Kulin Nation understood the power of diversity that is within our lands that also increases our capabilities. It was always good to share stories and those different experiences. However, they understood how to utilize this very powerful tool. They had to identify a common purpose. And what are the things that we all have in common with each other? Finally, the last law is connection to Bhavanata, or we might call it honoring sacred ground paying respects to our past generations, 
the people who took care of the land before us, the people who have lived and died on the land before we were here, paying respects to stories, histories of the land on which we live today. We're very fortunate in this land we now know as Australia to have an 80,000 years of human history. And it is important, or it's, it's most important to pay respects to that history, not only while we're here or at work or when we go home. And if we can adhere to these three Warungi Biks, I can say in the words of my ancestors, Wamanjika, Maran Big Big, Nerm Derek, Verupton, Ata Willem. Come with a purpose to our beautiful home, the lands of the two great bays, Nerm, Port Phillip Bay, and Marin, Western Port Bay. And it is a real honour and a celebration. I'm just looking around, this is a truly a collaboration through design and using these materials that can strengthen the way we can connect with each other. So it is that connection and we all bring a, a, a very large range of stories through architecture or design. So I wish you all well and Nungujin, you are in my presence and I'm in yours. So once again, Omanjika. Come with a purpose. Thank you, Nawi Carolyn, for that most generous welcome. Hello, I'm Professor Helen Lockhead, Chair of this year's Australian Architecture Biennale Committee for Venice, and a past National President of the Australian Institute of Architects. And I'd like to welcome you all here. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, and I'd also like to pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging, and acknowledge all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who are also here today, and also pay my respects to their Elders past, present and emerging. I'm delighted to welcome you to this evening to the launch of In Between by creative directors Tristan Wong and Jifa Greenaway. It promises to be a memorable and immersive experience, I guarantee it. Unfortunately, Janet Holmes Accord, the Australian Commissioner, sends her apologies. Janet has been the Australian Commissioner for the Architecture Biennale since 2009, and this would have been her sixth Biennale. So I'd like to acknowledge her and thank her in absentia for her long-standing support of the Institute and Australian Architecture and the many exhibitions staged in the Australian Pavilion in the Giardini in Venice over the years. The Venice Architecture Biennale is a chance for us to present an Australian contribution to world architectural discourse before an international audience of influential architects, designers and critics. I'm sure you've all noticed by now that this Biennale is different. Due to travel restrictions, we can't be in Venice. It is incredibly disappointing for all of us, I know, as this is an international event and which is a highlight for our profession, profiling our unique Australian architecture in a global setting. However, I believe this has been the story of COVID. Every cloud has a silver lining. Showcasing this year's Australian Biennale exhibition here tonight has brought us a rare opportunity to not only celebrate this prestigious event on our own shores. Tonight, we also have satellite events in Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth, so welcome to all of you. But we also have the opportunity to present an exhibition that will reach a much broader audience and remain on view online long after this, year Biennale, this year's Biennale closes in Venice. And this is a world first. So I'm really proud to be 
associated with this opportunity that we've been able to provide in what would seemingly be adverse circumstances. Since 2006, Australian architects have exhibited on the global stage in the Venice Architecture Biennale, showcasing not just fantastic architecture, but fresh, innovative and influential ideas and propositions that have seeded a new interest and international dialogue in Australian architecture across many forums. The theme of this year's Venice Architecture Biennale is how will we live together? In response, our creative directors, Tristan Wong and Jifa Greenaway, developed In Between, a timely and compelling proposition thoughtfully communicated through a richly sensory, sensory and evocative audiovisual experience. They designed originally an engaging installation for the Australian Pavilion in Venice before pivoting to this virtual format. The creative directors have expertly reimagined their exhibition, translating their content into an equally captivating experience that we will all share tonight. But before we do that, I'd like to thank all our Venice Biennale partners for without their generous support and genuine passion for Australian architecture, we wouldn't be here. Firstly, a big thank you to the Australia Council for the Arts for their continued support. And also I'd like to thank Corbett and Yuji Lyon for allowing us to use this incredible venue. Um, it is the perfect museum space for this evening's event. And thank you to our supporting event partners, Built Environment Channel and the City of Sydney, and also our supporting media partner, partner Architecture Media. To all our Network Venice partners and our patrons for their generous contrib contributions, thank you. And to our principal event partner, Brickworks, thank you for sharing our vision. The Biennale is such an important platform to showcase Australian architecture and we're grateful to you and all of our partners um, and recognize this to who recognize this to help and help us make it a reality. I'd now like to welcome Brett Ward, General Manager, International Marketing at Brickworks, to say a few words. Brett, would you like to introduce you? Thank you, Helen, and uh, good evening, everyone. Look, on behalf of the team at Brickworks, we really are pleased to be here uh, as a principal partner of the Institute of Architects and to once again celebrate Australia's association with the Venice Architecture Biennale. Brickworks, over the last 12 years, uh, has proudly supported this inspirational event, and I think that the Biennale really does evoke some special memories for many of us, and whilst we would have loved to have been sharing an apparel spritz with you all at the Brickworks Bar in Venice, uh, we really are happy to be here tonight, I think face-to-face -face, uh, in Melbourne at the Lion House Museum for tonight's event. Uh, it's actually wonderful to see so many faces that I haven't seen for quite a while. Look, our partnership with the Institute really continues to be a rewarding and appreciative collaboration between Brickworks and all of you, Australia's architectural community. Congratulations to the creative directors, Tristan Wong and Jeff Greenaway, in bringing in between to fruition. And thank you for the opportunity to acknowledge and celebrate First Nations cultures within our region. As Helen said, we've been able to achieve greater inclusivity for tonight's event by hosting satellite events in Brisbane, Sydney, Adelaide and Perth. So hello to everyone tonight who's at a Brickworks studio. I hope you're all having a wonderful evening. Seems really only fitting that in the exploration of the topic, we we're able to bring the design community together uh, in one place here on home soil. We really do appreciate and value the relationships that we've been able to develop over the years and really look forward over the next 12 months to be able to spend more time with you face to face, collaborate and support you with your projects. So congratulations again to the Institute and Tristan and Jeffa and thank you again for the opportunity to be involved. Please enjoy your night. Thank you. Thank you, Brett. I'd like to now take a moment to acknowledge the creative team that worked alongside the creative directors, Aaron Pools, Jordan Milliken, Elizabeth Grant, and Ash Parsons. And from Mostar, the video and production team, Angela Hernandez, Daniel Calvo, and Sebastian Miranda. Thank you all for your contributions. We really appreciate it. I now have the privilege of introducing this year's creative directors, Tristan Wong from SJB Architects and Jifa Greenaway from Greenaway Architects. 
Tristan and Jiva are both incredible dynamic architects and it's been a pleasure to see their complementary skills bring this project to fruition. Please join me in welcoming Tristan Wong and Jifa Greenaway. Thank you for being here. So it's always important by way of protocol to acknowledge that we're on the unceded sovereign lands of the Kulin Nation. And I thank Nawi, Carolyn Briggs for a very generous welcome. And it's always important to acknowledge that we are on the lands of the Wurundjeri and the Boon Wurrung people of the Greater Kulin Nation. And this project is very much anchored in notions of respect and it's always important to demonstrate a generosity of spirit and understanding the deep history, the 67,000 plus years of continuous connection to this place. And so that is, I think, always important to anchor and understand the importance of those protocols. So I'd like to firstly hand you over to my fantastic colleague, Tristan Wong. Thanks, Tifa. <coughs> um, wow. Welcome, everyone, to Venice in Q. In the no, seriously, it's um, a huge thank you um, um, to Corbett and Yuiji for their incredible generosity at very late notice to get us here. It looks amazing what we're about to do. Uh, hopefully, show you. Um, so yeah, bear with us. Um, a bit about this project. So it's titled "In Between." Um, the overarching theme set by. Uh, Hashim Sarkis was how will we live together and an, an incredible uh, notion and theme that he curated well before uh, even the pandemic that we've all gone through. So it was very timely, this, uh, this theme that came about. Um, our response to that has a number of layers to it. And the first one was starting to look at the incredibly unique setting that Australia um, and history that Australia has. Um, there's an incredibly rich history, 67,000 years uh, of, of indigenous um, life and knowledge and living on this land. And when you compare that to the few hundred years of um, uh, you know, colonial settlement, they, they kind of pale in significance to that incredible depth and uh, history. That became the first part of this exhibition about, about what we wanted to explore, the richness of um, First Nations people and how that could inform um, a lot of the work that we do, particularly as architects, obviously this being the, the Venice Architecture Biennale. The second part that started to overlay with this thinking was looking to um, the region, our, our neighbours, and uh, our neighbours in the Pacific region share many of these experiences, um, the occupation, settlement um, and colonisation that went in in many of these um, smaller island nations, atolls and countries. So there ended up being this parallel that we we're really curious in exploring. And we thought this was actually an incredibly um, powerful way of showcasing to the world that um, we wanted to broaden the conversation, not just um, have that conversation within Australia. We're one of only 29 countries to have a pavilion in Venice. So we wanted to actually open our doors and actually share this experience and this story uh, with some of our neighbours who actually have those same parallels. So Micronesia, Melanesia, Polynesia become countries that we actually wanted to talk to and bring and invite on this journey and to see the parallels that exist within First Nations voice, uh, knowledge systems, the language, the diversity of culture uh, and, and overlay that with that same, with the sea Australian context uh, and experience. Diversity is explored heavily within this story and this um, project, uh, not only an, from a geographical um, point of view, a cultural point of view and a language point of view. This region is, has the richest and most number of um, indigenous language groups anywhere in the world. So we, we sit within an incredibly uh, dynamic and unique um, part of the world. 
I mean, you can just spend hours going onto Google and moving the aerial around because the landscapes are just phenomenal. They just you're continually blown away by what uh, exists on our doorstep, this incredible richness. Preservation becomes another theme that's explored heavily in, in this. What can we um, do as designers and architects and creatives in bringing in the knowledge uh, systems, the experiences and the, and the um, tools and practices that have been you know, used for generations, again, 60,000, seven years, there is incredible learnings that can be taken from this. And the projects we're about to show you start to really embed some of that knowledge and go to a much deeper level of uh, practice in how they've come to these uh, projects. So architecture becomes that enabler, as we're saying. It, it has this incredible capacity to um, you know, inform uh, projects in a more powerful way and connect them to the land, to country, uh, and embed stories from, um, again, generations uh, and, and hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands of years. So architecture has this great uh, value in and how we can keep using it to strengthen that cultural um, richness between non-Indigenous and First Nations people. The vision to present a powerful set of works from Australia and the Pacific region that demonstrate architecture's capacity to strengthen cultural connections and understanding between non-Indigenous and First Nations people. And I want to pass to G for now to, as he always does so eloquently, talk through some of the way that we actually came about creating this um, project um, and the way we connected with so many incredible collaborators and contributors um, and, and Indigenous peoples. So, G for. Thank you. So as a starting point, we wanted to challenge some of the stereotypes, the standard tropes of how we frame and understanding this place. And so this map here is a construct. It's a construct which is only 240 odd years old. And what we wanted to do was broaden the frame of reference of how we understand this place and the unique positions and opportunities of how we engage meaningfully with country. And to that end, Australia is made up of over 270 distinct language groups and 600 dialects. This broader region makes up somewhere in the order of 70% of all languages globally. So this richness, this diversity, this understanding that Indigenous cultures are not monolithic, they are not homogenous, and we celebrate that. This is certainly a, a turning point in terms of how we start to understand our role and our contribution. And I said at the opening when we were announced as the the curators for this exhibition, that architects have a social responsibility. We work within a social licence or contract to ensure that we do well in terms of how we orchestrate our moves and how we start to engage and touch country. And so importantly, we can't do these sort of projects alone. And so what we also wanted to embed was a level of cultural authenticity and a level of collaboration and connection. So who you see here is our cultural advisory reference panel made up of a range of amazing First Nations creatives, thinkers, leaders in Australia. And so what we sought to do as part of the journey and the process is to pressure test some of our own working assumptions and to get various perspectives. So we have Indigenous people here from across the country and across our region. And so starting to embed that level of connection was pivotal to our ways of working and starting with this notion of inclusivity and what we call design equity. And so what you will also see is the range of projects which are showcased through this exhibition are dotted across this entire nation. And so what we know is you do not last on this vast continent for over 3,000 generations without the ability to adapt and change. But we can't do it alone. There are very few, for instance, Indigenous design practitioners within the built environment in the country. So we need partners, we need allies, and we need contributors to work together in harmony and in collaboration. And this exhibition very much showcases that process. And so importantly, the projects that we are showcasing this evening traverse across this vast nation, and this broader region, and this array of rich tapestry of Indigenous Australia and Indigenous region 
is manifest. And we can see the distinct language groups which are covered within this broader exploration of how we can think about the intersections, the in-between. And so what you'll see here is an array of projects dotted across the country. Some are modest, some are much grander in their scale. Some are in regional centres, some are in remote areas, some are in the urban context. And you'll see this rich you know, interface with how we can start to come together collaboratively to work towards a better future and understanding some of those challenges that we all share. We know, for instance, that this year the theme for Reconciliation Week is Heal Country. And that is very significant in the context that over time we have felled country, we have scarred country, we have poisoned country. But what we're wanting to do here is pivot to an embrace of how we can celebrate country, how we can remediate country, how we can restore country, and how we can start to engage and learn with the deep indigenous knowledge systems, the wisdom that is embedded among the elders, and importantly, showcasing the best of what architecture can do. We are an amazing profession. We are creative. We are focused on history. We are connected to science. We have a, a range of tools and skills that we can bring to the fore to solve some of the challenges that we are facing today. And globally, what we're wanting to do is to showcase through this exploration and through this exhibition that Australia is a significant player in how we start to transform and connect and to anchor in country and place. And we know that there are challenges. We know that through this pandemic, it's a reset, it's a moment, it's a reckoning in, of history of how we can start to do better, work harder, and to engage with all the skills and opportunities uh, that we are afforded by the privilege of being architects. And so importantly, we know country is not simply the topography. It connects to the ground, the subterranean, the flora, the fauna, the astrology, the connection to the song lines of country. And what we're wanting to do today is to take you on this journey, to transform you, to showcase the breadth and the richness and the diversity and the fantastic opportunities of how we can celebrate our experiences and then broadcast that globally to the world. And the way in which we've themed these series of chapters is, is to start to interrogate through these thematic connections of language and the importance and the understanding. With the diminution of language, we lose connections to culture. Understanding the deep knowledge and wisdom of Indigenous knowledge systems. Understanding that it can coexist with Western knowledge systems. And importantly too, how we can start to embed stories and narratives of country. And as I often say, you can concrete over country, but country still exists. The stories still reside in place. And significantly too, we understand that we need to know the country in which we are. And so the importance of you know, doing a welcome is to anchor and connect to the country in which we're located and to pay deference and respect to the traditional owners and the knowledge keepers, the elders. Um, and importantly too, the synergy and the, the responsibility of how we engage with preservation, how we can start to be restorative, how we can start to restore and understand country. And so this is the journey we're wanting to take you on and we very much are you know, enthused and, and you know, really glad that so many of you here today can uh, you know, engage with this content and we want it to be as accessible and um, equitable for everybody to see. And so we're very much glad to present in between. Thank you.
Te
Hello. Uh, wow. Everyone, I, was, I spent the whole time watching, not the film, but how many people were leaving, because I was like freaking out. One person left, my father, he's, he's not well, so he had an excuse. But um, thank you so much for everyone that's stayed and watched. You all were there. I hope you're all kind of quite um, mesmerized. We're going to do some very quick thank yous and then everyone can get a drink and uh, enjoy the night. Thank you so much to everyone who came along tonight. Uh, there's been an incredible, um, it's been an incredible journey with all of these different collaborators, contributors, uh, Indigenous and First Nations people, designers, architects, uh, an incredible uh, wealth of people that we've been working with. Thanks so much, G for co-creative director, uh, our guiding light and uh, couldn't have done any of this without without G for obviously to Jordan and um, Aaron. If I'd love if you guys came up because Jordan and Aaron um, have just been key to this whole project, and it, it literally wouldn't have happened without them. <laughs> Thank you so much. Two incredible creatives, um, so invested in this project. Just uh, uh, yeah, just it's, it's, it's occupied our lives for for two years. We got, an, we got an extra year to stress, thanks to COVID. <laughs> um, Mosta, uh, obviously, the, that spectacle, thanks to Mosta, uh, they are just incredible creative geniuses, what they've been able to put together. This definitely wouldn't have happened without Mosta. <laughs> uh, and they do have names. That is Angela Hernandez, uh, Daniel Calvo, um, and they've also had Sebastian Miranda um, supporting them. So these propositions don't happen by themselves. We've had many collaborators, First Nations, um, non-Indigenous, including Marie Clark, Tony Birch, the amazing Arab team, Terry, Kai, Ilza, Jim and, and Tim, the Institute of Advanced Architecture Catalonia, Studio Round, Big Plans and Maya Wong, and the amazing cultural advisory panel made up of Tom Mosby, uh, Jira Lalahavi, Mick Harding, Benson Salo, Carol Go Sam, Dallas Fisher, Tony Birch, and Alan Kong. Uh, yeah, there's so many people, uh, we, we will be done in one minute. To uh, the Venice Biennale Committee, Janet Holmes Accord, uh, Professor Helen Lockhead has been unbelievable in how she's helped guide this um, process in this project as well. Thank you so much for all the time. She's as invested as we were. I know how much, how passionate she was about this project. Thank you so much for um, the spirit, the guidance and the energy you've put into this too. Uh, to uh, Dr. Caroline butler Bowden, thank you so much as well. Part of the team that helped, um, you know, help support us along the way and give guidance. Julia Cambage has been incredible in her support as well. Samantha Cotterell, Amelia Holiday, um, uh, Professor uh, Tony Giannone, uh, and Ken Ma as well, all incredible. Thank you so much to Caroline Buxter as project manager, thanking SJB, the team who have supported us. They've invested so much as a, as a kind of, as a business and all of the people that are on the uh, creative team uh, Jordan and Aaron, um, to Greenaway Architects, obviously, um, to Tim Ross, who was involved in early conversations and, and helped guide the spirit of this as well and calling out to our neighbours and embracing a broader region. Isabel Toland as well for her uh, support. Diego Carpentiero from, based in Italy. Tara Kitter from the Australia Council for the Arts. Um, and, and uh, yeah, 100%, Elizabeth Grant, I think we've uh, gone through as well, who was so involved in the early uh, kind of uh, generation of this project as well. Um, Ash Parsons, um, who also supported us early on and then moved to another company, which was really disappointing that he <laughs> jumped ship. Um, all family, friends, contributors, collaborators, architects, communities, and Indigenous and First Nations people who have been part of this incredible project. And finally, and importantly to the principal event partner being Brickworks, who've been fantastic and supported us all along this journey, and we've been telecasting across into their uh, amazing showrooms across the country as well, and then all the other supporters as well, uh, inclusive of the Built Environment Channel, City of Sydney, Architecture Media, uh, University of New South Wales, Monash University, Lions, Denton Court Commercial, TKD Architects, Kennedy Nolan, Mervac Design, Hallam Architects, uh, Anita 
Belgiorno Nettis and Lucia Belgiorno Nettis, um, and then all the other Venice uh, bronze and uh, silver uh, partners, and certainly the uh, support of Janet Holmes Accord and uh, Penelope Seidler. So this is an amazing uh, experience that we've been on. Um, I've created and um, a new family in terms of the entire team uh, here today supporting us, uh, the amazing Moster and, and Arup in terms of the, the digital interface, which is amazing. Uh, we've been on this long journey um, of a couple of years, but I guess on reflection, one of the key elements that we've really enjoyed is the spirit. There's been a collaborative spirit every step of the way. There has not been a single uh, raised voice. It has been seamless. And you know, importantly, you know, understanding and, and building that coalition of the willing and creating that, um, that connection has been really important to us. I very much thank Tristan Wong, who's an amazing driving spirit to this whole enterprise, a good friend of mine who I've known for, for many years, the entire creative team who were unbelievable. They were amazing. We could not have possibly have done it uh, without them. So to, to leave you with uh, language, Murray Yanawa, go well. Thank you. <laughs>